is food supposed to be just a deal uh, to make profits on? Or is food supposed to be something that is essential uh, to life? And how can we provide that food in a sustainable way that everybody can afford it? My name is Dolores Huerta, and I'm the president and founder of the Dolores Huerta Foundation for Grassroots Organizing. And in my previous life, I was the co-founder of the United Farm Workers Union with Cesar Chavez for about 40 years and uh, you know, did a lot of work and still continue to do a lot of work with uh, immigrants and especially farm workers uh, throughout the Central Valley of California. So it's not about a deal which equals profits. We should think of food as nutrition. We should think of food as medicine. We think, should think of food as sustaining life and be, to make sure too that that life is healthy and that we are not poisoning people when we are feeding them. People are reimagining in radical ways some of the fundamentals of our society, whether it's policing or housing or healthcare. It seems like our food system is overdue for a reimagining. Do you have a radical vision for a new food system? Oh, I do. You know, one thing in California, we do have a, a, an organization of organic farmers, and uh, there are thousands of small farmers uh, that belong to that organization. And the whole idea of growing food without economic poisons, without pesticides or fungicides on, on the food, I think. And again, when we think of our health care, that we have the highest cancer rate in the United States of America than any other country. I mean, just in the last three weeks, I've had so many people that I know, family members that have died of cancer. And we know that this can be avoided if we just take care of the way that we grow our food. I just spent some days talking with farm workers, long time people who've worked in the farms, now becoming farm owners. And they talk about the challenges that they face, but also the, the promise that they bring to all of us who eat and who care about the food system. Do you see a transition happening? Do you see this effort being a, a wave of the future? And what difference do you think that transition of a whole generation of farm workers to farm owners might make? Oh, I think it would make a, a great amount of difference because I think farm workers, you know, they do care about their work. They, they see themselves as professionals. A lot of people don't think of them in that way. They think, well, it's a first entry level work into the work system, but they don't see themselves that way. They care about the crops. But on the other hand, uh, the, the one way that more farm workers can become farmers is that we have to uh, be able to, they have to be able to get the, the financing and that's the problem right now because you know right now the bankers uh, they will supply money to uh, to the big growers uh, but they won't uh, give loans to say especially latino or black farmers so what are the next steps if if this moment of covid of uprisings against institutional bias and just generally the sense of we need to make change were to play out in the area of food what would you see people do? What, what are actionable demands? You've, you've fought around worker rights to organize, you've fought around wages, you've fought around healthcare and around housing, and you've scored some victories in each of those departments in your life. It seems like we need to almost think bigger, or is it just a matter of more connections? Uh, I totally agree with you. I think that we have too many of us, uh, including myself, uh, we always think of these incremental changes that we have to fight for and that we have to achieve. And I think now we have to stand back and look at the big picture. They, there is so much in our economic system that is not working. And we've seen it right now that's collapsing uh, before our very eyes. And so that we have to start thinking very, very differently uh, about the way uh, everything, especially our food supply, the distribution of our food. And, you know, again, you know, when we think of California and where I'm at, and you know, are, we're the fifth largest economy in the world. And uh, again, we have um, here in the Central Valley where we, people make uh, billions of dollars in profits on food. And yet we have so many children and families that live in poverty. And how can that be? So that really speaks to the fact that we have to have radical, radical changes. Well, you know a lot about building power. You've been part of building a lot of it in your lifetime. Do you have a sense of what the story will be that the future, maybe 50 years from now, tells of this moment? 
what kind of power do we need to build? And if you perhaps were building the farm workers today, what would be some learnings from your history for this generation? Well, the one thing is that I think we have to be patient and we know that we have to build power from the ground up. I think the manifestations that we have seen of all of the young people that are protesting out there and they have actually speeded up the process, you might say, because they have you know, kind of shaken the, the, the nation's conscience. And this, But we need that same kind of energy, that same kind of movement going toward our economic imbalance. Right now, we're talking about racism uh, and we're talking about police misconduct, et cetera. But, then, and, but we know that the inequality that we have uh, in economics also leads back to racism uh, in, in, in a great way.